Hi, this is singer-songwriter Elizabeth Edwards, and I'm just saying. As we start a new year, a lot of people will be declaring New Year's resolutions. I used to do this, and it did not work, and now I know why. A resolution is when we resolve to quit something, something that's not good for us. Addiction easily falls into this category. Swearing off is rarely effective. In fact, it never worked for me because it doesn't deal with the complex underlying issues involved. However, the main reason resolutions are rarely successful is that just quitting isn't enough. In recovery, we make a decision to change. We decide to take a new direction. In fact, the word decide comes from the same root word as disciple. It means to follow, to take a new direction. Decisions are powerful and they are what bring us to a new way of living in recovery. Decisions are what set us on a new journey, a new road, so to speak. And when we make a decision, We let go of our old ideas and ways of doing things, and we learn to model others who have been successful at staying abstinent, clean, sober, whatever word you want to use. Just quitting would be the equivalent to just stopping the car, whereas making a decision is like taking a different road. When I was new in recovery, it was difficult for me to see past my present problems and pain. I was stuck in the same old story day after day. And I didn't know how to get out of it. One day, I decided I had to do it differently. I had to do life differently. I had no idea how. But with a real decision, you get real action. Real action is how you know if you've made a real decision. In fact, it's the difference between a decision and a wish. We can't always think our way into right action. We often have to act our way into right thinking. And that was a really big aha moment for me when I realized how true that little statement is. It changed my life. Sometimes we just have to take action and see if that's the right thing. The next important piece of the puzzle for me in any decision or change is to focus on where I'm going instead of focusing on the past. There is a reason the windshield is much larger than the rearview mirror. There's also a reason we have a rearview mirror. Can you imagine what it would be like to drive down the freeway looking primarily at the rearview mirror? You would have to go really slow, You'd have to stop often and probably you'd end up in a collision and definitely be pissing a lot of people off. That is exactly what it's like to go through life focusing on where you've been instead of focusing on where you intend to go. You might be in the car and possibly pointed in the right direction and moving in the right direction. But if you are over-focused on the rearview mirror, you are doing it the hard way. I spent way too much time doing just that. So I know how painful it can be. I encourage you to learn from the past but don't live there. When we are in our re- on our recovery path, we are on the right road, traveling in the right direction. And when we learn to let go and forgive everything in the past, our lives accelerate in the, our new positive direction. I, like most of the people I've met on my recovery journey, have the tendency to focus on the past regrets and hurt. We cannot change the events of the past. However, We do learn how to clean up our past and those hurts and regrets, and that is when we learn to accept the past. When we learn from it and share it with others that they might heal, that is when the past has value. The other little distortion that can keep us in park, back to my metaphor, when we are over-focused on the future, we create all kinds of anxiety because it's a new territory getting into new territory. I'll go into depth in future podcasts and future blog posts on this topic, but for now, I'm going to share a few little tricks. First, I like to focus on where I want to go. I look through the windshield, so to say. To stay present with myself, I ask my intuition, my higher power, my soul's voice to guide my thinking and my behavior. And when I learn to listen to this still, small, loving voice, I will soon recognize what my next step in that new direction should be. As I develop the trust in my intuitive voice, I will gain momentum and learn to enjoy the journey. 
just like a literal journey in a car, there is a road behind us and a road in front of us. But for right here, right now, I'm in the car, enjoying the scenery, listening to the soundtrack of my life and singing along. I might have a travel companion or I might be alone with my higher power. What I know for sure is that the further I move along my path, the more I learn to trust myself and enjoy the journey one day at a time, one mile at a time. When we let go of the old story, the old ideas of who we think we are, we get the opportunity to take the biggest adventure of our lives and become that which our creator intended us to be. My goal every day is to sink deeper into today and be present as I can be so that I don't miss a minute of what is right in front of me. I can do this more easily when I know I'm headed in the general direction that is right for me. That is all I really need to know. And when I turn down the voices of my ego, my inner critic and my inner child, and I listen to my intuitive voice, my soul's voice, that ancient voice that lives within, and then I act upon the direction of my higher power, who is always correct, always has my best interest in mind, and guides me to the best version of myself, that is when I know everything is all right, right here, right now. Thank you for listening today. I hope this has been helpful to you in meaningful ways. I'm singer-songwriter Elizabeth Edwards, and I'm just saying...